All right. So uh, this is what the bot sending dashboard looks like. Um, you know, like there are three different kinds of bots that you can create. I'll mainly be covering the support bot today, but basically any kind of bot where you would like it to answer based on some knowledge base or some uploaded data or documents, you, you'll be able to create that, you know, through this support bot option. So all you need to do is just click this create a support bot button enter in the name for your bot. So whatever company or use case you're trying to create the bot for, you can just put in a name. For example, let's say if we create a bot for Sonic itself, I can call it Sonic. click the create bot button. And this will take us to the sources page. Now sources is one of the most important parts of the Sonic configuration uh, wizard. So basically this is where you upload or add links of your documents or, or of your knowledge. So there are multiple different ways you can upload your data. One is of course files. So we support multiple different kinds of file formats, PDF, Word documents, TXT files. So any of those kinds of files you can upload here and as many as you want. We also have links. So if you don't have files or you, know, you want to directly add a website link, so you can enter your website links, you can enter your you know, YouTube video URLs as well. So a lot of different kinds of links can be entered here. Then sitemap is another thing. So if you know sitemap kind of lists down all of those, all of the URLs that are present in your website, this helps Botsonic easily kind of find all of those different website links and use them to train the bot on. And then FAQs I'll quickly jump to in a couple of minutes. And then we also have integration. So currently we have an integration with Notion where if you have a Notion uh, workspace, you can directly connect it using this button and automatically use the data from Notion to train your bot instead of manually uploading the files. So let's try uploading a couple of files. What I'll do is first of all, I'll go to writesonic.com because we are creating a bot on writesonic. So I'll just copy the homepage link. I'll type it in. Secondly, let's say we go to the pricing page. So I'll go to writesonic.com slash pricing. I'll add that. Similarly, we'll add Botsonic pricing. And then maybe also let's add the Botsonic landing page as well. So a couple of these different website links, as you can see, I've added. And I'll just click the upload and train button now. What this will do is it will go through all of those links once it goes into the processing status. So it will go through all of those links. It will scrape all the text from there. And then it will uh, train our AI model on these website links, right? So if you can see all of those are going to the processing status. When it says train, that means that that specific link or file has been processed. And you can now ask questions and it will try to use answers from there if they are present there. Right. Same thing you can also do for a YouTube video URL. So you can take in any YouTube videos. If those have some transcripts, you know, usually Google auto transcribes the video. So if there is a transcript associated with a specific video, then um, Botsonic should be able to get that transcript and train the AI model on that. Right. Um, and now on the right hand side, you'll see we have a preview of the chatbot available. So here we can now ask any question and it should be able to answer anything which is present in these links that we have uploaded. And of course, instead of these four links, you can add like hundreds of links or hundreds of files. So the more information you have, the better the bot will be able to respond. So let's say I just, I'll just say hi. And I can ask something like, let's say what is right Sonic. It has given an answer here. And at the bottom here, if you see, we also have the sources option. So sources tell tell you which links or which files exactly have, you know, have been used to create that information or to create that response. So in this case, it came from the home page. Same thing I can ask, what is the pricing? So here it has given the pricing. Again, it's well formatted. And in this case, it came from writesonic.com slash pricing, right? 
So just like that, I mean, pretty, pretty seamless. You just upload your data and you should be able to then ask any question related to that data. Now, one very important part here I'll cover, which is FAQs. So FAQs basically help you write down the most frequently asked questions, which might be wrong, for example, in your data. So a couple of different use cases here, either, for example, something which is not present in your data, but you want a lot of people are asking for it and you want the answer for that to be you know, accurate. You can just put that in here. So for example, I can say maybe who built Botsonic and I can write that, right, Sonic built Botsonic. So now when someone asks a question which is semantically similar to who built Botsonic or who was Botsonic built by, who made Botsonic, all of those kinds of questions doesn't need to be exactly the same, but semantically similar, then um, you know it should be able to use this FAQ to answer that question uh, as it is, right? So similarly, you can add multiple different FAQs. Now the real importance of this comes into play once you have hundreds or thousands of files and some information that might be present, let's say in some of those files might be out of date. So what you can do is just come here, write the most recent information here, and the bot will consider this FAQ answer to be a higher priority than your uploaded files, and it will be able to give a more accurate and up-to-date response there. Right, now we'll jump into settings very quickly. So settings is, you know, it's probably the most second most important part here because it lets you really, really customize the bot as per your brand, as per your you know unique needs. So in this case, let's start with the appearance tab. First of all, I can enter in the bot name. Uh, I'll leave it at right. So on a company name again, you know, very common fields. Anything that you modify here will show up right uh, on the chatbot. So for example, I can put right Sonic here as well. So this has been updated. Company logo and bot avatar you can upload. So company logo is what you see here and bot avatar is you know what the bot responds back with. So I'll just upload the right Sonic logo here. And you can crop and stuff as well, as you saw. So you can crop as needed to get the adequate amount of image there. And once you're happy with that, just hit the save button. And yeah, here it has been updated. Yeah. So the icons have been updated. Similarly, you can also update the color. So let's say maybe I go with yellow. And any of the text here. So hey there, how can I help you? All of the text here that you see can be modified here. So I won't go through each one of them, but you get the idea. You can, any text that you need to modify, you can come and edit over here. Now these three, four settings are quite important. First is hiding the branding. So if you see at the bottom, it says powered by Botsonic. If you would like to hide this banner, you can uh, do that. You can just click this hide button. It does require an add-on. So you'll need to purchase a separate add-on, but you should be able to do that. Similarly, widget position, like you want this bot to appear on the left-hand side of the screen or right-hand side, that can be controlled over here. Then we have show sources. Uh, as we saw a couple of minutes back, whenever Botsonic re replies back with a response, usually it shows where that information came from. So either you can keep it visible or you can also hide it. And then finally, we have the post chat feedback, which is where once the user tries to end the chat, it will ask them for a rating and some feedback. So that is something you can, of course, keep or you can also remove. So I'll just quickly show what that looks like. I'll click Save. My branding has been removed here. I'll just say Hi. Now, if I try to kind of end this, it will show me this pop-up message. This is the post-chat feedback where the user can give a rating whether they you know, whether the bot was able to resolve their issue or not, and they can add in any comments here as well. Or if they are in a rush, they can also skip it. So that was that. Similarly, bot settings we have, so you can choose the template. Um, for most use cases, support template where you want your data to be used to answer the questions. Support is the recommended one. Uh, we'll also go through personalized and e-commerce probably in, uh, in the next webinar. 
but usually support should do the job. Second is the response length. Uh, by default, this is set to short, so it will answer between 50 to 100 words for every response, but you can also make it medium or long if, you're, if you want longer responses there. And multilingual support is also enabled. So if you type um, even in some other language, it should be able to answer it uh, without even separately training it on, let's say, French data or German data. All you need to do is just ask here, and most probably it would be able to answer it in whatever language you ask. And then finally, you can also choose the AI model. Um, by default, it uses, it, this does not necessarily use OpenAI uh, GPT 3.5, but multiple other models which are in the same class as GPT 3.5. So we use, we are model agnostic. So multiple different models are being used like Anthropix, Claude One, um, Mistral, bunch of these different models. And depending on the latency and the quality and a couple of different factors, these um, models will automatically be selected. And you can also go with a bigger model like GPT-4 or other models which are in a similar class for even higher quality response. But of course, it would be a little bit slow in replying. So totally up to you. I'll, I'll just leave it at 3.5 for now. Right. And then there are a couple of other settings which you can go through. Uh, one very important one here being the chatbot guidelines. So if you want to train the bot to reply in a certain way, you can add it here. So for example, let's say, I always want it to be polite and never, you know, say any rude words. So I can just say the same thing here. Be polite and never be rude, right? You can also add some very specific things like, for example, when the user asks for an enterprise plan, ask them to contact support, oh, sorry, sales at right now. Right, so you can be as specific as you want, but basically here you are modifying the behavior of the bot to act in a certain way when certain conditions uh, are being met there. So you can totally write those conditions in natural language, like how you normally do, and the bot should be able to pick it up. So I'll just save that. And uh, we also have starter questions. So starter questions and FAQs people usually get confused with. FAQs are more like a data source, but starter questions, I'll show you what they help you with it. So I'll just reset this. Now I can add in about two to three different questions. Uh, we call them starter questions because these are the first questions which are shown as recommendations to the end user. So for example, if I say, what is right Sonic? So let's say 100 people every day come to my chatbot and ask about rights on it. I can just create an uh, create a starter question for that. And now whenever a new user comes in, they'll see this um, kind of pop up over here and they'll also see a sample question here. So if they're confused, what do I, what do I ask? They can get a hint and click on it and it will you know, reply back. So it's just to get the user started so that they are not overwhelmed, right? And you can add up to three starter questions here. We, we recommend three because it's usually three of them are good to really tell the end user what kind of questions they can ask. So you can put three different like varieties of questions here to basically educate the user what kind of questions can be asked. And uh, finally, for lead generation, again, one thing that a lot of users ask us for is this user form. So you can you know, show or hide this user form. And what it will do is at the starting, it would ask the user for their name, email. You can also add more fields here, like their phone number. And all this data will get uh, collected, which you can then later use for lead generation for sales for those kinds of aspects as well. So that was about sources settings. Um, we also have inbox. So all the conversations that you or your users have with the bot are being logged here. So you can see all the conversations that were happening. Uh, what were the sources that were used to answer that? So all of this can be used. You can also block certain IPs if needed. And the data that you collect via form is available in the users tab, and you can uh, export that data. Of course, we don't have any data right now, but if you have collected that data, you can export it from here. We also have analytics where you can see how many total conversations were there, how many uh, users were there. So all of that data can be found here. And now the one of the other most important bits, how do you actually 
embed this bot or use this bot, uh, you know, in a day to day life. So very first thing is you can put it on your website. All you need to do is, you know, go here where it says embed the bot. You can click the copy button and you can just ask your developer or if you are a developer yourself, you can just paste this on your website and the bot will start showing up. So I'll show, a, show an example. There is a website called codepen.io where you can paste sample code. So let's, let's assume this is your website and in the HTML, I can just paste that code and within two, three seconds, my bot would appear here. And there you go. So that's all you need to put it on your website. It's, it's that simple. You just copy and paste the code and uh, the bot will start working there. Uh, of course, you can modify everything here. You can, you know, if you want it to not appear on the right side, but on the left side, all of that can be modified from the settings, right? You can also put an iframe here. If you want a bigger bot, you want to control the dimensions. You can use it via the API. And then we also have a ton of integrations with things like WhatsApp, Telegram, Calendly, Facebook Messenger. So a lot of these different integrations are available for you to use. And you can explore them and use them as you wish. And two or three of them I would like to point out here. So WhatsApp and Survey are, of course, uh, you know, very simple ones where on WhatsApp, your users can interact you know, with the chatbot that you train. But at the same time, there are two or three very important ones. One of them is consent agreement. If you would like to display like a GDPR banner or some other consent banner, you can do that via this app. Similarly, we have request callback. If you would like to, you know, put like a button where users can request a callback from your sales team or support team, that can be added here. You can install Google Tag Manager for analytics for tracking purposes. And then uh, we also have Zendesk. Zendesk one allows you to, you know, if you use Zendesk for um, kind of the, you know, help desk kind of thing, you can uh, install this. And whenever the bot is unable to answer, it will automatically create a summary of that conversation and send it to Zendesk so that a human on Zendesk side can pick it up. So this is also very handy, uh, handy app that a lot of people use. And similarly, you can explore some of the other ones. We have docs for everything and you can learn more about them there. One last thing here, there's also a share tab. So you can click on that share button and click enable. This will give you a publicly uh, available link, which you can share with your colleagues or friends. So they can also test out the bot um, before you even add it to your website or WhatsApp, all of those kinds of things. So this basically just um, shows the bot in like a window kind of thing. So you get a full screen bot and same activities that you do on the normal bot can be done here as well. So yeah, that's about it. Um, in a lot of information we covered. So if there are any questions, happy to take that up. But otherwise, as we were mentioning, we do have a uh, one month you know, business plan available for you to try it out for a month and uh, any queries our team is available to help out. But it's pretty seamless. So I'm sure that you won't need a lot of help. And then of course our customer support team and our documentation are also available there to help out as needed.